Oh, I am so happy. After my last Creality review, I was genuinely worried this could be the nail in the coffin for my relationship with them, but for my specific use case, I like the Creality K1. I really like it. Maybe it'll be right for you, maybe not. Watch on. And argue amongst yourselves, because regardless of any view, this printer is still a huge step forward for Creality, as they've begun to realise what the competition now offers and the K1 is our first real taste of a classic printer brand closing that gap. Let me show you why I love the K1. So hi, I'm Ross and this is Fohammer Videos. Right, let's get the boring stuff you can read on the website out of the way. This is an enclosed Core XY printer with a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. That's a little on the smaller side, but it is at least a Core XY printer, and that means we don't need to worry about any of that horrible forward-back motion of the build plate. And the idea of the enclosure is that it makes it easier to print stronger materials like ABS. They're sensitive to temperature changes from even the lightest breeze, and supporting this is a hot end capable of printing up to 300 degrees. I don't know if this is some kind of special hot end or not, and as I've said in previous videos, I honestly don't care, I'll find out when I need to replace it. And when I say I don't care, let me reiterate that for people who haven't seen my previous videos. The reason is, you see, there are two clearly different types of 3D printing enthusiasts out there, and I've tried to explain the difference clearly in previous videos, but one of my commenters put it much more succinctly. One, there are those who love to tweak and tinker with the printers themselves, ensuring that every material pushed through it has the perfect extrusion result changing and tweaking all of the hundreds of parameters or even changing components themselves to get the most out of them. Because playing with and tweaking the 3D printer is the main part of their hobby. The other is people who want the printer to pretty much be set up for them, have everything self-calibrate and self-test so they can focus on creating things because their favorite part of the hobby is the actual creation of models or props and other such things that come from these printers rather than spend the hours dicking around with these printers themselves. And I, I'm the latter, and my videos are aimed at people in a similar boat. I mean, sure, I'll tweak a printer if there's a clear and obvious improvement I can make easily that I've read on some forum, but most of the time I want to spend as little time mucking around with these printers as possible so I can just make cool stuff. And I'm not saying that either type of person is right or wrong or better or worse, I'm just giving you the perspective I'm coming from in these reviews. If you disagree with my views and want more from your printers, that's fine. Maybe I'm just not the reviewer for you. But if you want to know what it's like working with one of these to make cool objects, then stick around for more of my opinions. Because for me, the K1's great and it looks like it's going to get better too. Now, unboxing was a bit of a pain for me because it came in a small crate. I couldn't get the cardboard box out of that, so I just unloaded the contents bit by bit onto my worktop. And the actual printer setup is straightforward, just remove all the foam and several securing screws for the build plate. Plug the screen in, and that's about it. Though, I've got to say, one annoyance I do have with the printer is something that several brands have been doing lately, including some of the more popular ones and that's putting the filament holder and runout sensor on the back of the printer, meaning you need to have access to the rear at all times or spin it round every time you want to change a reel of filament. Honestly though, the better solution here is to get a separate filament dryer box and a spare PTFE tube so you can feed it in from the side. Once you boot the printer up and get to the UI, you can see that Creality have made some solid improvements to the user experience over their previous offerings. Although there are some letdowns that cheapen the experience a little, and unfortunately, this audience tend to not accept that because if they're not even gonna get the UI right, then what else have they cut corners on? During the out-of-box experience, telling us things like the self-check process is expected to take, and then cutting off the rest of that sentence is one of the more typical printer companies not giving enough of a shit irritations that puts off many Western customers. Many of us will see this as well, if you aren't going to care enough about your software translation, what else aren't you caring about or testing well enough? But when compared to other printers, including Creality's own resin printer, the Hallett Mage Pro, this is minor. Just work on your first impressions here, Creality, that's all I'm saying. Now, the rest of the UI, as far as I could see, is not only well translated, but it's also clean and very intuitive. Connecting to Wi-Fi is done as part of the out-of-box startup, 
and when new firmwares are available it will tell you and update the printer on your acknowledgement as it just did now literally as i'm writing the script for this video one odd thing i couldn't get working on startup was the connection to creality cloud so i could use the app but I think this was probably just a server maintenance downtime issue that happened to coincide with me doing my recording because I couldn't sign into the app or to the Creality Cloud website. But this was resolved the next time I tried, which was about a day or so later. But I am going to come back to this Creality Cloud platform later on in the video. Now, the updated version of the slicer called Creality Print is easy to use. Creality have made their own fork of Cura and some love it, some hate it but all of the settings are hidden behind a couple of much simpler options to select. Just pick your material type and you can choose either normal or high quality profiles to print. And for me, that worked just fine. If you want or at some point find you need to adjust more variables, just double click on a profile to see the detailed options. Even in here though, you have even more stuff hidden behind an advanced toggle. And whilst most previous Cura users probably don't like this, they would prefer to see all the options in front of them. For the new user, there are three distinct levels of complexity between easy and insane. And that, I think, is another reason why this is a great starter printer. And besides, all of you advanced users are using Prusa and Orca Slicer anyway. Though, in saying this, I had noticed from Jerry's review on the print house, when using a third-party slicer, you can't actually enable the fan in the side of the printer. Now, to be fair, this fan will help with part cooling, but boy is it loud. I don't normally talk about the volume of a printer on my channel because all FDM printers are quite loud. But this, well, this was distractingly so. And it's also the reason that the sound on several of my recent videos has sounded quite echoey or weird. I normally have printers running when recording audio, but because I had this one running, it required some excessive cleanup and made the audio on those videos quite echoey. Now, I noticed quite quickly that you can dampen the sound by keeping the lid on the printer when it's printing, but it's suggested not to do this when using PLA because it can overheat and cause the material to shrink. But honestly, I had no issues because the side fan did a good enough job of cooling them. And Creality's already done a pretty decent job of issuing software updates to both the slicer and the printer itself. But that phone app, wow, just wow. And no, not wow in a good way. You see, everything Creality's done right with this printer immediately goes out of the window with this app. Download it for free now and use it to see what I mean. Unlike their competitors' phone apps that have a nice clean interface and intuitive printer controls, this thing is an absolute mess. And I'm not the only one who's saying this. For one, when you launch it, every time you get a five second unskippable ad, and then there's this weird gamification of various models on their own STL storefront that you can only get using Creality Coins. And how you get these Creality Coins, I don't know, and I really don't care. And the other awful element is the community center. Both of these sections are filled with absolute unfiltered and uncurated crap. I've seen pornographic adult content on here before, and it wouldn't surprise me if some models on here are just re-uploads by other creators who are charging for them somewhere else. And then there's the endless notifications you get from the app, offering 20% off this and that. Honestly, it's like browsing AliExpress with a severe and greedy FOMO push. And since this is similar to AliExpress, maybe this works in Eastern markets. But in the West, they need an app that's no more than view the printer and its settings first, just finding your time-lapse videos easily, for example, and then add a curated storefront of the best STL files only. And I know this is a big whinge about not the printer itself, and yeah, this is optional, you don't need to use this, but I'm going to keep complaining about it until Creality fix it or kill it. But as I said, don't judge the printer on this, you can completely ignore it. It would just be nice if I could get just phone notifications about the printer status and easily access the camera, which I'll come back to. So yeah, I just opted to stick with the Creality Print Slicer where I can load my own STL files and send them to the printer wirelessly. Some of my earlier prints had some issues like layer shifts and in one case, a large fail print where the organic shape tree supports broke quite heavily. But after tightening the belts and a firmware update, I was able to get this model printed without issue. And now I have a 600% scale dredge marine. 
And you may know, I'm not typically the FDM printer guy usually. I like resin printers far more. In fact, the reason I cover them mostly is because my contacts at most brands don't really understand this and assume I like all printers. You see, when enrolled in their printer reviewer programs, you don't get to choose, they just send you stuff. I only cover these in the most part because I feel bad just accepting them and I'd rather make a video than pay to send them back. But recently, when I 3D printed a sci-fi bolter, I got bitten by the FDM bug and now I love them, especially this new generation. And this K1 is so fast. I genuinely just enjoyed standing there and watching it as it powered through prints like my first little Benchy test. And normally for these reviews, because I want to get them done and gone, I normally just print as little as I can to learn enough about the printer to give my opinions. But with this one, I just kept printing. I even spent my own money upgrading it too. You see, they've got a camera add-on for just $20, so I kind of had to pick this up. And unlike the version I got with their Ender 5 S1, which was some crazy janky web box add-on and some daft bendy tripod camera that would stand nowhere, this is a really clean install and just connects to the cables that are already in place for it. And as soon as this is connected, you immediately get remote viewing, you can enable auto time-lapse creation, and it even offers some AI detection as I realized when it warned me I couldn't start a print because I'd left a model on the build plate from the last job. And Creality are planning to release a LiDAR add-on too, which could be used to measure accurate extrusion rates of filament as well. And once that's released, if it works and realizes its potential, then this printer could be on par with the Bamboo's X1 feature set at half the price. Now, Creality wanted me to tell you that this printer is now fully open source. I have no idea what that means to the end user, and I don't care. But if it matters to you, there you go. It does it. I assume it means you can do more tinkering, but as I mentioned, do not care. This printer works great for me just with the stuff you get in the box and I've added the camera extra. I'm looking forward to what else is coming too and this is a great start from Creality because it shows, like I said in one of my previous videos about the Bamboo X1, none of the brands get what Bamboo are doing but it looks like Creality have almost cracked it. They've got some work to do but this is a fantastic start. Prints come out smooth, and thanks to its vibration compensation in both the onboard features and the rubber feet, I don't get weird warps or layer shifts even when I print taller things. So long as Creality keep working on this product, sort the bloody cloud out, out or just make a separate one more targeted towards this audience, they have an absolute belter on their hands here. But like with any printer, I do wish it were a little bit bigger, but hey, they do have the K1 Max as an option, so watch out for that review coming soon once I've got my hands on with it. But with these features alone and at this price point and the option to easily add more to it in the future, I can comfortably say that this is one of the best printers I've ever used. So if you've used it, please let me know. What's your experience? Pop that down in the comments. But if this printer's taught me one thing, it's that I'm pretty much done with unenclosed bed slingers. I want to say thanks for watching and thanks to our members for supporting us making content like this. They do get early access along with their name and credits and more. If you do like this content, please don't forget to click like and leave a comment for the algorithm. Until next time, thanks for watching. Fohammer out.